Okay. Anybody in and around the Nikon booth, if you haven't grabbed a seat yet already, come in. You've got a program that's a real treat for us, especially if you love animals and wildlife. We have pleasure. It's a, it's a great pleasure to introduce a Nikon Canadian ambassador who's here with us, who a few months back we called and said, we need you to do a project um, with a camera that's coming, but you can't ask any questions. Just tell us when you're available. And she, she conjured up, put together a really, really great shoot and a series of images with the Nikon Z7 that's just unbelievable. So, in the presence of nature, let me introduce Nikon ambassador, Michelle Valberg. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, everyone. It's so great to be here in New York. How's everyone doing? Good. Hi to everybody in uh, live land as well. So, as Michael said, uh, I don't know, it was back in July. He called me up and he said, okay, Michelle, uh, we want you to shoot wildlife and you have three weeks. And as wildlife photographers, we know that if you're given a time like that in three weeks, you sure hope that you have, you have the animals and you have the light. You have no guarantees. There's no, there's no guarantee that you're gonna have any of the above. So I had a pretty delicate and, uh, time period uh, to, to really produce some wildlife images with the Z7. Super, super excited. This is an amazing time for photography, for Nikon with the Z7 and the mirrorless and having it in wildlife and actually shooting in, uh, in, the, in nature with wild creatures. So my assignment, I decided I was going to stay in my own backyard. I wanted to photograph in a place that I knew but I wanted to see it differently. And I think that we can get used to our own place and be complacent. And I wanted to see it differently. So I decided that I would take my kayak and I would explore my lake on Charbet Lake in Ontario. And uh, I also had the ability to really just walk out my front door at 4.30 in the morning and get in my kayak and go explore. I had more guarantee that way. But there were certainly days that I was out there that I had the perfect light and I had the perfect, you know, glass water and the steam coming up and no animals. And my project was the Z7 with a new 500 millimeter 5.6 PF lens. Absolutely an, a game changer for me, especially working in my kayak. Imagine the ability you can just pull that out so nicely and be able to hand hold a 500 millimeter. So my project, my first project was uh, Sharpe Lake, and then I was able to take uh, the Z7 to the Arctic. So I have a couple of images from there as well to share with you. So first I'm gonna talk about the animals that I found in, uh, in Sharpe Lake, and I think that they're all relatable. You know, they're all animals that we've seen or, or we've heard of, and you know, they're all common to us. But I was really trying to capture them in a way that I had never seen before even finding a, a raccoon. I, you know, it was, a, it was a, a, a second that I was able to pull out my camera and be able to capture this animal before it flittered away. Animals that I had seen before on the lake, but what I was really trying to do is show them in a way that I hadn't seen before and with this beautiful light. And as I said, it's so difficult to predict. You have no idea what's going to be in front of you. And, uh, and I just wanted to show the clarity and the ease of, of shooting with the Z7. It's a game changer for me for wildlife photography, for sure. Even when I was photographing, I, I, I saw a beaver. He actually surprised me. He, he came out of the water right in front of me. And then um, I was able to see beyond it. So the fact that this beaver came out, he was gone in a flash. I was able to photograph him. But I looked beyond, and I saw something in the, in the bay that I had never seen before. And it was movement, and it, there was something that was happening that I hadn't seen. And as I paddled closer, I had the 500 on, I had the Z7. As I paddled closer, I was able to see what it was that was making the movement. And there were two snapping turtles, massive snapping turtles. Um, I think they were mating. They could have been having a territorial fight, but I think they're, by their movement that they, were, that they were mating. And having the silent shooting with the, with the mirrorless is what I think is one of the biggest game changers for me as well. You know, I was able to spend time with these animals. I was able to be with them without the clunk, 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 clunk of, of the shutter. I didn't have any disturbance. They were peaceful. I was peaceful. I was able to hear them breathe. I was able to hear them blow bubbles in the water. 
and as nature photographers and wildlife photographers, so much of the experience that I love is being able to be in their environment and to interact and to have this experience with these animals. And without the sound of the shutter, I just experience so much more. Here's a little video that I was able to capture um, of, the, of them together. Crazy. And it was so exciting for me to see this on my own lake and, and animals that I hadn't photographed before. But also what was so exciting, I was able to videotape through the viewfinder, the EVF so easily, that's handheld. I was in my kayak, my kayak was moving. I was able to capture on video this movement so beautifully and so easily and to switch back between video and, and uh, photo. And then even there were a couple of times, you know, the animals weren't coming out enough. They weren't coming out of the water enough to get a real clear picture. So I, I was, uh, I thought, you know what, this is the best way to do it. And, and to be able to click an image throughout the video as well, when I felt that there was a, a moment that I could, it was, it was fantastic. So the whole video aspect of, of the Z7 and having that ability to switch back and forth so easily is a game changer for sure. And of course, you're always looking for light. I would go out at, uh, before the sun would rise, but as you were going through the morning and, this, and the light was changing, um, so, was your, so was your exposure. Being able to look through the EVF and be able to see your exposure change and you adjust accordingly. And when you're in these magical, beautiful moments of light, you're able to adjust the, the, the exposure without having to take your eye off the camera and look at the back of the camera or your histogram. You're able to do it all through the v EVF. So again, another, another aspect of, the, of this camera that has just been a wow factor for me. Even the tilt screen, I wanted to give, I don't even like frogs, <laughs> but I was, I was trying to show as many animals as I could with the C7 and challenge myself. I was a little worried, I have to say, about these frogs jumping into my uh, kayak, but it was also the first time I had really had this close encounter with a frog on a lily pad, but I wanted to give it a little bit more of a Superman pose so I used the tilt screen, went right outside of my kayak. I was nice and grounded because I was in shallow water and I was able to shoot this. And they're very skittish as well. You know, silent shooting and, and slow movements. It's amazing what, what, can, uh, what can happen. So I have a little video that I want to show you. It's, a, it's just a slideshow. Um, and I want you to listen because one of the things when you're out there and I, and I said with the, with the turtles, and you're able to hear, you're able to hear the flap of a wing or, or the sound of a call, and you're not disturbed by any, any sound. And I think that's really important, and that's very special um, for me. So I want you to listen to, uh, to the background of this uh, little slideshow. And imagine shooting while you're at it. <laughs> it's a little different when you're showing it <laughs> amongst all this noise in here, but I think you can get the idea, and, uh, and many of you have probably experienced it. But um, the other amazing uh, FTZ adapter is, is absolutely the best part of, of the Z7, being able to take any lens out of your bag. Obviously, we have a huge investment in our lenses, and to be able to use the 800 millimeter, or the 500, the 600, the 180 to 400, the 24 to 70, the 70 to 200, you're able to slip those onto your camera and you have zero degradation. There is no image loss whatsoever. It's absolutely outstanding. So here I was using the, the 800 millimeter photographing, um, photographing the loons and getting nice and close and personal with, uh, with them without having to get uh, too much into their space. 
So this is a video that I want to show you. And it's one of those moments that I, you know, as photographers, it's really hard to know when to do video and when to do photos. And when you're doing photos, you think you should be doing video. And then when you're doing video, you think, oh, I should be shooting photos, right? And uh, this was a time that we went up to my, um, we, went up, we were at the cottage and we were in the bigger boat. And I saw a group of loons and I said to my husband, something's going to happen. There is something happening here because there were seven of them. They were all together and they started to make these movements. I didn't know what it was going to be. So I decided I would do video because I thought this would be a better chance of me capturing whatever it was what was going to happen. And it was just one of those intuitive moments for me. And I was so glad that I was shooting video because I, don't, I, I would have never captured one of these loons coming out of the water the way it did. So I'll show it to you now. <laughs> I've never seen this on our lake before, and this interaction. And then right at this moment, when these two were going uh, so close to each other, said, okay, now I got to do photo. I have to capture this on photo. And I did, and they stopped, right? So. You just, and I was so happy that I got this because I would have never anticipated that loon coming out of the water the way that it did. And being able to have that now on video and to be able to show that and share is, is pretty fantastic. I experimented with the hummingbirds and, and you know how fast those creatures move. So I shot this with, at a 400th of a second using the 800 millimeter. And uh, you know, I made a lot of mistakes along the way uh, photographing these hummingbirds, but I'm super impressed with the, uh, with the autofocus and the fast responsiveness, and I, it's, 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 a, it's just been amazing. I used the 180 to 400 um, with his black crowned heron and also with a, a little squirrel. You know, it's a matter, you know, these are animals that we can relate to. I photograph bears. I'm going to uh, polar bear country in a couple of weeks and I photograph all these big creatures and exotic creatures. And it's really fun to be able to just share the images of the creatures that we experience in our own backyards. And I think as wildlife photographers, it's so great to be able to get out there. And these are the ones that you have access to and that you can play with. They run, they leave, they, they have expression. And uh, yeah, it's a great way to experiment for sure. So now I'm going to take you to the Arctic. I was just in Greenland, and then we went to northern Quebec and Labrador, and then down to Newfoundland. And I'll tell you, Greenland and uh, the north, the Arctic, is an extraordinary place. And I live in Canada, I'm proud to be Canadian, and, and, uh, and I'm, I'm just always blown away by what we have up in, in the Arctic regions. And I know everybody thinks flat, white, and cold, and it's just so much greater than that. Um, we started with a, a day at the glacier, and uh, we were watching it, and again, I think what happens, you know, when you're down in the, in the south and you're in these areas, we're so over-consumed with, uh, our senses are, are loaded with sound and sights and, you know, they're people. And when you're up there, it's silent and it's beautiful, and you have such different senses happening because you're smelling the Labrador tea from the ground, or you're seeing this absolutely majestic, beautiful landscape in front of you and glaciers and icebergs, and then you're seeing an, an amazing creatures as well. And then when we were photographing with this, you know, you're, it's so silent. Um, I was on a Zodiac with 10 people, and they weren't shooting, it was just me. And being able to be on a silent shooter, it felt like I was like incognito, you know, and nobody was knowing what I was shooting, if I was shooting, and I, there was no disturbance. But we heard the sound of a glacier, and this is when I probably wish I had my video uh, playing, but unfortunately I didn't have the, uh, the quickness to, to be able to do it. But I did capture it in, uh, in stills, so you can see the glacier calving. Sometimes it works. I'm really happy that I have this in stills, but I, it would have been a real powerful story with, with video as well. So I'm t always trying to find different uh, images to take. I know this is in wildlife, um, you know, but I was, I was just trying to show the different crops, the 16-9 crop, which I'm absolutely loving as well. And uh, I was trying to look at things a little differently and trying to find the color pop. And then I just looked underneath and it was a whole different story. So it's like looking at different ways that you can photograph and different vantages points and go under, go above. 
Um, sometimes you don't have that option with wildlife photography, but when you're out and you're experimenting, I just felt like my creativity level with the Z7 was just amplified. It was just extraordinary. And this is the type of landscape that you have. We're now in Labrador, and uh, the, the, the sounds of the silence, um, you know, the silence is deafening, you've heard that. Um, and then the, the sights of the, of the colors of the landscape. We have the colors in the trees up here. With no trees, all the colors are blanketing the ground. It's absolutely extraordinary. Like, you know, hard to know where to, where to start, where to stop, how many. I think I took 10,000 photos with the Z7 just on, in this two-week trip as well. And sometimes you're lucky enough to find the unlikely in a, in a beautiful, vast landscape or tundra with, with amazing color. You have a polar bear peeking around. Fortunately, we didn't get very close to these polar bears. It was shot with an 800 millimeter with the Z7, but um, it was pretty cool to see it in, in its environment in such an extraordinary landscape as well. Getting down low to the ground, I didn't bring a macro. And the ground, the tundra is so soft. I would lie down and I would do all these little cloudberries. We had blueberries. And it was just so beautiful to be able to just see all the intricacy of, of what we have on the ground there. A mushroom, it was so much fun to experiment. And one of the things uh, that I didn't do, I, when we were hiking a lot, I don't bring a tripod. I'm not a tripod kind of girl. I don't like tripods that much. but. Um, when we came across this waterfall, I wanted to capture the motion, and I wanted to test the Z7 to a level I hadn't before. And with the in-camera five-stop stabilization, I was able to hand-hold this image at a quarter of a second. Who would have ever thought that you could use a camera hand-holding it at a quarter of a second? So then I went further, and I got down to an eighth of a second with this waterfall. It was pretty cool. Imagine hand-holding for that length of time. Incredible. So then we went to Cape St. Mary's in Newfoundland, another extraordinary place. And, and it's where they have 15,000 nesting gannets. So you can imagine the sound of all these birds and the sights. It was so beautiful, so majestic. And I'll show you what it was like, because it was uh, overwhelming to see so much action happening. So I started with my 800 millimeter, and there were birds flying everywhere, and there's so much going on. It's like being in Antarctica with all the penguins and knowing where, where to start, where, you know, try to isolate, and that's what I did. Instead of looking at the grand scheme and trying to capture all of everything that was going on, I decided to just focus right directly on a few different things happening, a few different birds that were showing some expression. And this was a chick that they're almost the size. They're ready to, f uh, to fledge the nest. So they're the size of the adults. And I was just trying to find some personality. Uh, this guy looks like a, a maestro. And, uh, and I was trying to capture them in flight as well. And, uh, and uh, with the 800 millimeter, it wasn't easy, I have to say. Like, there was so much action going on, and they were flying and swooping, and they were, there was so much movement. It was, hard to, it was hard to manage. And I had just brought the 800 millimeter for a long lens, and then I also had the 2470. <laughs> so instead of, uh, instead of shooting the 800, I thought, you know what, I'm just going to put the 2470 because they were flying right over my head. They were flying into us, and I was able to capture um, the bird in flight with the 2470. It was that close. This is full frame. Amazing, amazing, and all in autofocus. And it was just they were so fast, and they were right beside, right beside us. So it was just a constant shooting, and the autofocus was just managing so fantastic. Really, really great. So in all, I've uh, I've shot uh, a lot with the. Um, with the Z7 in my own country, but also uh, up in Greenland and down through the Arctic. The weather sealing on this camera is fantastic. It holds up um, the quick responsiveness, the clarity, the color, everything about it. The EVF is extraordinary. Um, being able to see your exposure live, being able to see everything without actually having to take your eye off of the viewfinder. It has been a real game changer for me. There's so much more. And then the ability to spend that time with the animals and to be quiet and to experience nature the way that, that 
that you should be able to, and without disturbing the animals as well. I mean, that's also very critical too. So I have a little video that I want to show you because the creativity, uh, it's not wildlife. It's actually all black and white image. And um, the Z7 has a picture control. And I put it on carbon. And when we went into a small community in Nain, Labrador, I just felt the, uh, the, I wanted to photograph it all in black and white. I wanted to see it in black and white. And it was the first time that I was able to actually put the camera up to my, lens, up to my eye and see in black and white. So you're seeing the picture control reacting. It's also recording and color at the same time. So I was working for Adventure Canada, so I had to photograph in color, but I wanted to see everything in black and white. And it actually took me back to my, um, my fine art days and my university days when we photographed in just black and white. And I have a tendency now to photograph everything in color and then go and look at it maybe in black and white, but I don't go that, that, that way very often. So it, it, uh, when I went into this community, I said, this is where I'm going to focus. I just want to photograph and I want to see in black and white. And to be able to do that, um, again, it's just, it's, it, it allowed me to be so much more creative and so much more alive. I, I don't know, it's, there's something that's ignited um, a different sense of creativity, I guess. So I wanted to share a little video of just how I saw Nain Labrador in black and white. So I head to um, Polar Bears with uh, Frontiers North in a couple of weeks. I'm super excited. I'm going to be bringing the Z7. I'm going to be uh, shooting with the 800 millimeter, and uh, and I just I can't wait to start exploring more in these extreme conditions. It's going to be cold, and I know that the the camera will perform for me. I I just know it, and I just look forward to exploring it more because there's so much to learn. And uh, I hope you all have a chance to work with this amazing new system and, uh, and enjoy, enjoy it and explore and, ex and be creative. So thank you very much for having me here and coming to see me and bye to you uh, live at home and uh, enjoy the show. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Nikon Ambassador Michelle Valberg, amazing images. We're gonna take a 15 minute break here and satellite stations are opening up. And coming up next, Christy Odom, capturing the sublime in nature, right here at 1245. Stretch your legs. We'll be back in 15 minutes.